Beware of niggas. I would like to start off by saying Barak Tayahawa. Barak Tayahawa Shai. Um, this lesson is pretty much centered around men of the Lord um, being brought into this truth and um, the true brotherhood being brought into this truth. And um, brothers, out of the kindness of their heart, you know, to, that are moved by the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, will do anything for a brother to help him out, you know, in whatever situation he may find himself in when he has the means to do it. But you have um, guys now that are coming into this into this truth and think this is basically a welfare, or they come into it because. They know they can get money from brothers or they come into this thing because they know that brothers like to get together and cook, you know, and, and you know, and sip, whether it be Yayan or whatever brothers drink, you know. Um, and pretty much, you know, they come into this thing not as a, a thing of uh, uh, working out their salvation and learning the knowledge to, to be sealed, to be saved uh, uh, when this destruction comes, but they come into this thing for advantage. You know, to take advantage of brothers, you know. So this is a uh, if you that type of nigga, then either change or or, or get get to get to stepping, you know, because it's a damn shame. You know, you have, you know, you really can't have like open, you know, arms, you know, because you know you have Jakes out here that take advantage of that shit, you know, and you have you have low lives out there pretty much. Uh, this is Jeremiah 9 and 4. Take ye heed of every one. So like it. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor. And trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant. And every neighbor will walk with slanders. And they will deceive every one his neighbor. And will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. And weary themselves to commit iniquity. And pretty much you can't. Not every, you know, public enemy said it best. Every brother ain't a brother, you know. And this pretty much what this scripture here says, you know, that every brother is not a brother. You can't trust every guy that comes into this thing and says, Shalom, you know, and, and learns to salute, you know, wears a beard, can put on a garment, you know, and come and watch at the camp, you know. Because not everyone is meat for this. The, um, the, uh, uh, John the Baptist said it best, you know, I'm just, I'll just get it real quick, Matthew chapter 3, verse 8, bring forth hence fruits meat for repentance, so not everyone is meat for repentance, not everyone has those sincere uh, intentions, you know, out of a pure heart, you know, not feigned, you know, you have false brethren out there, as the apostle Paul said, so you have to be aware of this, you know, and you have to see a certain guy's patterns and, you know, things that he's doing. If a guy is just newly coming into this thing, really, he has no business asking, you know, uh, 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 money for anything. I mean, unless he's just in a serious, dire situation, you have, you do have, um, you do have exceptions, you know, out there. You know, there's always exceptions to the rules, you know. But the reason why I'm saying that is because you have these guys that's coming into this thing just... For for a gain, you know, just to get over, you know, and this is not that kind of party, you know. This this is about the truth, and this is a sacred brotherhood, you know, and 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 there's a bond that that you build with brothers here that you don't even have with your own family, you know. But then you always have those that want to take advantage. That's why the scriptures say, you know, take heed every one of his neighbor. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus. Uh, <clears throat> 11 and 29 bring not every man into thine house for the deceitful man hath many trains see so you have like i said you have them dudes out there that come into this thing and think that this is a free handout you know and that's the reason why you got a lot of jakes that go to our isupk you know because they pretty much that's what they do over there and that's why the people are going there they're not going there for the the word and for the salvation of the word, they go in there because they can receive either food or shelter, you know, or whatever <clears throat> it is that they provide for them over there, you know. And I'm not saying that you no. Know, I mean, if if a brother is in need, you know, and you got to put him up, that's one thing, 
you know, but, you know, Yahweh Shai wasn't running a, a Salvation Army, you know, where people was were homeless and he just went and, 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 and paid a certain amount of money and got, you know, some houses so that they can house these people up in. Nah, you know, that's not what this is about. I'm uh, just going to read this real quick before I continue on. John 6, and I'll go straight to the point. 6 and uh, 26. Yahweh Shai answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me, not because you saw the miracles. See, it's not because of the miracles and because of this truth, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. So it, it was something of substance, some kind of gain, whether it was to be boarded, you know, put put up somewhere or to eat, you know. And Yahweh Shai did it because he had compassion for them because they continued with him for a certain period period of time and weren't eaten. Labor not for the meat which perisheth. And that's what these guys are doing. They're laboring for the meat that perisheth. Oh, hey, Shalom. Yeah, brother. Oh, man, great lesson. I watched the lesson you did. That, that lesson was, was fire. You know? Hey, you got $20 you can lend me? You know? But for that meat, uh, you like brother man from... Uh, from uh, I forgot the name of that 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 show. <clears throat> now, I don't remember if it was Martin. One of them shows. You no, know, brother man used to come through the window. Uh, labor not, for, <laughs> labor not for the meat which, which perishes, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath the Most High the Father sealed. Okay. So it says, Bring not every man into thine house, for the deceitful man hath many trains. Like as a partridge taken and kept in a cage, so is the heart of the proud. And like as a spy, watch it he for thy fall. You know, so really they really have don't have your, your best interests at hand. You know, what it is is just, if you can't provide for them, they, you know, they won't, they won't, uh, they won't um, abide with you. This is Ecclesiastes 6 and 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. So this this man has to be proven. <clears throat> These guys that are just coming in, <clears throat> they're not they haven't been proven. I mean, although you like I said, you do have that those exceptions to the rules. But when a guy first comes into this thing, he's supposed to, he has to be prove, proven before you can really give him a position or before you could even actually uh set him up. Or, or give him any type of credit. First uh, Timothy five twenty two. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partakers of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. So lay hands suddenly on no man, meaning don't be too hasty, because the guy got a good memory and he's been watching the videos and memorized stuff. Oh, he, I'm gonna put this man in this position here, and and you haven't even proved the guy yet. You don't even know what this man is about or what his intentions are, you know. So it says. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. And that's what happens. You have these guys that are pretty much are friends or they call themselves brothers for, an, for their own occasion. You know, because they have ulterior motive. They see a, a way to get uh, free money or they see a way to get a free meal or they see a way to get, get, get free drinks. You know, it says, and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. See, and then when you find yourself... In that's them same shoes, you know, or, or when you find yourself in a, in in a situation of need, he ain't nowhere to be found. No, no, brother, I ain't got it, you know. And there is a friend. Now, like I said, this doesn't apply to every brother because you have exceptions to the rules. All right, so keep that in mind. And there is a friend who, being turned to enmity and strife, will discover thy reproach. And again, some friend is a companion at at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. See, so this is how you prove a friend. Uh, matter of fact, the scriptures say, let me see if I can get that real quick. Um, just bear with me one second. Uh, Sirach 12. And eight, a friend cannot be known in prosperity, and an enemy cannot be hidden in adversity. Uh, let me see. I forget exactly how it's worded, but in other words, you know a, a, a brother, you know, by by the adversity that you go go through with him, you know. But like I said, I can't really think of the actual wording. I believe it was in the book of Proverbs or. Here it goes. Proverbs seventeen seventeen. A friend loveth at all times. See? And a brother is born for adversity. So that's how you prove a brother. If you going through things and a brother's uh, there with you, 
going through those same things that you're going through, then, you know, that's a very, very good chance that that's, that's a, a brother, you know, a real brother. But in thy prosperity, back in uh, Ecclesiastes 6.11, but in thy prosperity, he will be as thyself and will be bold over thy servants. If thou be brought low, he will be against thee and will hide himself from thy face. Separate thyself from thine enemies and take heed of thy friends. See, so it's like not every guy that calls himself a brother is a brother, as we read in Jeremiah. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor and trust not in any brother, for every brother will utterly supplant. So you have to be able to discern this. A faithful friend is a strong defense, and he that hath found such an one hath found a treasure. And 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 how does this happen? By by proving him. You know, by when you go through adversities and he's still there with you, then that's 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 a friend. Nothing doth contravail a faithful friend, and his excellency is invaluable. A faithful friend is the medicine of life, and they that fear the Lord shall find him. Whoso fear of the Lord shall direct his friendship aright, for as for as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. And so that's why it says, uh, Yahweh shall say, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. You know, my son, gather instruction from thy youth up, so shall thou find wisdom to thine old, to, till thine old age. All right. Um, this is Second Corinthians 8 and 8. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. So you, this is a thing that you have to be proved or proven, you know. This is not a thing where, where you, you can just let anybody into this thing at any given time, you know. No, you have to you have to discern. You have to know, okay, this guy, he's been coming around. He's been doing this. He's been do, doing that. He's been paying his tights. So, you know, whatever criteria it takes, you know, to, to prove this person, you know. And then, then you know, okay, well, this this brother, you know, he seems to be sincere. You know, he's, he's, he's into this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you brothers know what I'm talking about. Second Corinthians eight twenty two, and we have sent him with, and we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligently in many things. See, but now much more diligent, now but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow uh, helper concerning you. Or our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Yahweh Wherefore show ye to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. So pretty much this is about a thing of, of you have to prove yourself. You know, before you can get into any position, you have to prove yourself. You know, and proving yourself is not by just talking the talk. You know, you got to walk the walk. You know, you got to get involved. You have to... You know, you have to you have to do things, you know. You see your brother in need, you know, you, and, and you know he's a brother. You're supposed to help him. Um, let me see if I can find this one last scripture here. I believe it's in, f or is it the third chapter? Maybe it's the third chapter. Right, 1 John 3.18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. So it's, it's about, about deeds. It's not just about speaking words. You know. Um, and there was another one. Right. I think it's the 17th verse. But whoso hath. And let me start at 16. Hereby perceive we the love of the most high. Because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's goods, good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion for him, how dwelleth the love of the Most High in him? And the scriptures say to spend your, your money on your friend, you know, and then it, let it not rot, you know, under underneath a stone or something like that. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Mm. 
Right here, Sirach 29, 10. Lose, lose thy money for thy brother and thy friend, and let it not rust under stone to be lost. See? So that's how you prove a brother. You know, when you're in adversity and a brother's still there with you, then you know you have a brother, you know? And, uh, you know, if your brothers could pause this and read it, this is, you know, pretty, pretty good little read here. It's on brotherhood. You know, it so said, don't call me brother unless you know its meaning. Don't call me brother unless we are brothers. Just because we might have things in common doesn't mean we are brothers from another mother. You know, and then you read on down and it goes into what brotherhood is, you know, and how, how brothers, you know, watch out for each other, you know, in good times and in bad times. All right. So, you know, with that, you know, I'm, I'm going to end the lesson there. You know, just beware of niggas, man. Uh, so with that, I'd like to say, Barakatayahawa, Barakatayahawa Shai, and hopefully you brothers have been edified by this lesson. Shalom.